All right, welcome to Beyond Soup, where I put up all sorts of stuff. And today's stuff is about crossovers. And uh, because I put up all kinds of stuff, I just wanted to at least tell you what a crossover does and give a quick explanation of what um, is the function of a crossover. Well, a crossover, uh, you can think about it as a is a traffic cop for um, signal or frequencies. Um, what it does is to, it makes sure it protects the speakers that you are amplifying. Um, so basically a speaker moves up and down um, and depending on the speaker, it has limitations and it has a natural resonance. So it moves only a certain uh, number of, uh, or only a range of movement that they have. So tweeters have little tiny movements up and down. You've got your mid range that move much bigger and then you got your obviously your subwoofers that are really big okay so basically um you don't want uh these tweeters to move with that much range or else you'll blow the tweeter um and the other way around where you've got a subwoofer um the subwoofers don't move very fast they move slow and these need to move super super fast and these need to move uh, a much move a lot more air, but they move a lot slower. So you can't make this one work as a tweeter or high frequencies that to, to move those kind of uh, or create those type kind of sounds and then vice versa. So what the what does a crossover do? It protects the speakers from moving a certain amount um, and actually dedicates a certain uh, frequency range to those. Uh, uh, type of speakers. Anyway, so there are um, there are two types of crossovers, and um, uh, that just to simplify, there's a passive crossover network, which is something like this, and then um, you've got your coils and your caps, and then uh, and then you've got your electronic crossover like this. This is a acoustic. XM3 electronic crossover, and that does it in an electronic fashion. Obviously, these are set to a certain amount, a uh, certain um, frequency, and that's pretty much it. That's your protection there to where it filters out certain um, range of frequencies, but then it lets the uh, higher frequencies or mid and high frequencies uh, get to those speakers that you're amplifying. With an electronic crossover, Oops, with an electronic crossover, you can um, you can change it, change the values of those uh, that frequency uh, easily with a touch of the knob or adjustment of the knobs. So it's really more convenient. So um, that is uh, uh, you know the two types of, of crossover that I'm going to go over. So. Again, what we want to make sure that we do with a crossover is to protect our speakers. So um, speakers, when you buy them, they'll uh, may already have a protection circuit on it, which is, again, the frequency range that it does. Like this speaker, uh, it already has a cap and coil. And um, again, protecting it from lower frequencies so it doesn't try to move so much when it's amplified or else again what you get is either um distortion when when you make it uh do certain things that it's not supposed to do or it will fail on you and it will separate the uh the um the voice coil inside so a great way to do uh, to protect it is with your um uh, crossover again it's not specifically for the amp it's specifically to protect your um, your certain speakers, uh, so it doesn't. So one is it makes it move to its natural resonance, so it sounds better, and it's not trying to do things that it's not supposed to do. And then, um, and then you know, again, secondly, is to to make sure that it's uh, protects protects your speakers or your investment. So uh, again. That is a quick explanation of um, 
of what a speaker, I mean, a, a, a crossover does. And when, again, when you buy certain things like this, they, they already have a crossover inside built in. So it's already protected. Um, but sometimes you have like these high end systems that you, um, you install like in a car, for instance, and then you want it to play at a certain frequency. So here you can dial in that, uh, that frequency that you want it to, um, to, to play and, uh, it'll, it'll do it in that, in that fashion. Let me go ahead and play some music and kind of give you a quick demonstration of this um and uh and for instance you've got your signal coming in here and then i've got a bookshelf speaker so similar to this that it's uh playing through so here i can change the um the crossover to start at from 32 hertz or to 400 hertz so basically you're kind of going like this to where you want it to start you want this to start either at let's just say this one says 32 32 hertz so this uh these bookshelf speakers i have that's playing right now uh it's got a mid-range and a tweeter so i want this to start at 32 playing at 32 hertz so I'm not use, I'm not uh, playing playing it so low where it's like 20 hertz where it just can't play it and it'll tell you because you can't really hear that frequency from that speaker because it just can't move that fast then you can change it like this one you can change it to 400 hertz oops 400 hertz so you can make it start there and we'll do that now. And I hope, I hope you can hear that. So now it's starting to play here at this range rather than try to play here. So the great thing about electronic crossovers is the fact that you can do that quickly without having to change values like this, like a, a coil and a cap and a resistor and things like that to where you don't know the values until you have to kind of put it on a chart or something like that and then figure out what you need to buy and things with an electronic crossover you do it uh, quickly easily just by turning the knob so again hopefully um, that's something that uh, helps you guys out if you're uh, shopping for a crossover uh, whether it's passive or uh, an active elect or electronic crossover um, and um, Again, that's one of the things that you kind of want to do is obviously protect your your speakers, your investment, and you can do that with an electronic crossover. All right, hopefully that helps. If you like these kind of videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. That's Beyond Soup, where I put up all sorts of stuff. And I'll be putting this up too as well, uh, just to show you a, a more uh, bigger demonstration of this a particular item. Thanks, and... Uh, I'll see you on the next video.